Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and today I'm gonna to show you how I built this simple storage bench with like a humongous drawer. <laughs> This is a really simple and pretty quick build that's really versatile. So basically you can use it in any room of the house, but I'm putting it in our bathroom. So if you've seen many of my recent videos, you know that we are remodeling our bathroom. And when we removed the freestanding tub that used to be there, since this was built on a slab, there was a large hole in the concrete underneath where the plumbing had been. Now I don't plan on replacing the tub with another tub anytime soon at least, but just in case later I needed access to this plumbing, I wanted this to be accessible, but right now I needed it just like covered up. Now, long story short, I had intended on putting some built-ins here, but I decided to just patch the floor with some leftover pieces of flooring that the previous homeowners had left us and just put this bench here. Now, like I mentioned before, this bench is very versatile. So later, if I ever decide to come back to this and put something else here, I can just easily move this bench somewhere else in the house and put it to good use. Anyway, that's a lot of backstory and this video is about building the bench. So why don't we just dive right in and get building. Also, just a side note, if you're wondering why there's a picture of a cat here on the wall, it's for two reasons. One is because there is an access panel behind here for the shower valve. But two, this was our very first cat and I made this picture years ago as kind of a joke and it's been hanging in every bathroom of every house that we've lived in for the last like six or seven years. So it's only fitting that it shows up in this bathroom as well. So while this project wasn't the one that I had originally planned to share for this space, it's still a fun build nonetheless, and I'm excited to get back to furniture building after the remodel. Honestly, a smaller build is probably better to ease back into it rather than a large built-in, and I've got several sets of built-ins to build for other spaces in the house soon anyway. If you'd like to keep up with all the latest projects, be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow along because I've got a long to-do list of builds to share. But anyway, for this simple bench, I pulled out a sheet of plywood and started cutting it down using my circular saw and Craig Grip Cut and AccuCut guides. I built a majority of this project from one sheet of plywood with the exception of the 2x2s that I used for the legs, the quarter inch plywood drawer bottom, and some scraps that I used for the trim on the sides and the drawer front. You can find the full cut and materials list with diagrams in the plans linked in the description below. After I cut down the sides, top, bottom, and support strips from the sheet, I found some 2x2s to use for the legs in my scrap pile and trimmed them all to the same length. I sanded everything before assembling, then drilled 3 quarter inch pocket holes into the side edges of the side panels. I used one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws to assemble these between two sets of legs so that they were flush to the inside. This gave me two bench sides. Now to assemble the rest of the bench frame, I used a solid bottom panel. You don't have to use a solid panel here, but I figured if for some reason I ever wanted to get rid of the drawer and have this open, I'd just go ahead and install a solid bottom now. Then I used some plywood strips for the top and the trim piece at the bottom. Of course, you could also use a solid piece for the top as well if you preferred instead of thinner strips, or you could have just used 2 by 2s for this as well. At the end of the day, there are plenty of ways to build the same thing. I drilled 3 quarter inch pocket holes into the ends of the plywood strips and the solid panel and assembled the main bench frame using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. At the top, I installed two strips vertically and two horizontally. The flat pieces at the top will be used to secure the top panel in place and the vertical pieces are basically just for trim. You'll also notice that everything on the front side is inset about 3 quarter inches and this is just for looks to give it some extra dimension. You could definitely install it flush to the front if you wanted. With the main body of the bench assembled, I realized that the strips at the top had some flex to them, so I just shot a nail through them. This isn't critical, but it will help hold these support pieces together. Once the bench frame was assembled, I installed a pair of 16 inch ball bearing drawer slides into the opening about 3 quarter inch inset to allow for an inset drawer front later. Now it was time for my favorite part of every build, the drawer. 
My process for assembling drawers is pretty much always the same. I cut my four drawer sides from three quarter inch plywood and used a table saw to cut a quarter inch dado, a quarter inch deep, a half inch up from the bottom of each piece. Now I have a dado blade, but I usually don't swap it out unless I'm using it for a bunch of cuts. Normally I just make one blade width cut, then move the rip fence over about an eighth of an inch and make another cut and then adjust again to clean out the middle. This gives me a quarter inch dado to slide a quarter inch plywood into for the drawer bottom. Just for a cleaner look, I like to edge bend the top of my plywood drawer boxes. This is totally optional, but I will leave a guide for how to apply iron on edge bending like this in the video description if you'd like to check it out. I drilled three quarter inch pocket holes into the ends of the front and back pieces of the drawer box, making sure to drill fairly close to the top and bottom so that the trim that I add in a minute will cover them. Then I assembled the door box using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws and the quarter inch plywood bottom installed into the dado. I installed this drawer box onto the slides in the opening of the bench. I have a complete guide on how to measure, build, and install drawer boxes that I'll link below in the description for details on all things related to drawers. Once the drawer box was installed, all that was left was adding some trim and a top. There's a fan going behind me but Lucy sits here because I guess I'm over here and she wants to be close to me. I don't know, just in case you're wondering why the dog looks like she's dying over here in the floor. I don't know. It's by her own free will, so. For the trim, you could use leftover plywood strips if you wanted, especially if you're painting, but I used solid 1x2s for the sides and 1x3s for the drawer front because I did just have some scraps already for this. I simply cut four pieces of 1x3 to piece together to glue and nail onto the drawer box front so that when put together, it left an eighth of an inch gap around all sides. If you saw my vanity build recently, this is how I installed those drawer fronts as well, except for here, I used brad nails in addition to the glue because I was painting, so I could simply putty over these holes. After the drawer front was on, I cut some 1x2s to trim the sides at the top and bottom and also just glued and nailed these in place. I puttied and sanded over all the joints on the trim and the nail holes and gave it a final sanding after it was dry. While it dried, I edge banded the plywood panel that I had cut for the top of the bench. I wanted to keep this top piece a natural color and just poly it, so I didn't attach it until after the bench base was painted. I removed the drawer to make painting easier and I primed and painted the bench base and the drawer front separately. Before adding the drawer back in after painting, I went ahead and placed the top on and used one and a quarter inch screws through the top supports to secure it. I gave this top a few coats of poly and added a drawer pull to the drawer. Then I put it all back together and called it complete. This bench will be great for storing towels in our new bathroom, but would also work well for blankets in a living or bedroom, shoes, gloves, or hats in an entryway, or for toys in a kid's room. I hope you enjoyed this simple build, and if you'd like to build your own, don't forget to grab the plans linked in the description. And be sure to subscribe and follow along because I have so many new building projects coming soon that you won't want to miss out on. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.